Directly to the west is a group of stars arranged in a square and called the square of Pegasus. Of the stars in Pegasus, we are interested in Alpharats in the northeast and Markab in the southwest. Several hours later, when this constellation is higher in the heavens, we run a line through one side of the square of Pegasus, which will point to Denobcatus, and a line through the other side to Fomalo. If we follow a curved line to the west of Fomalo, we come to Altair, which can be checked by the two fainter stars, one on either side, which, with Altair, are called the shaft of Altair. Continuing the curved line, we arrive at the conspicuously bright star, Vega, which is at the 90-degree angle of a triangle formed by Vega, Altair, and Deneb, which is in the Northern Cross. Altair, Deneb, and Markab form an equilateral triangle. In southern latitudes, the most outstanding group of stars is the constellation called the Southern Cross. The bright star at the foot of the cross, nearest to the South Pole, is Alpha Crucis, or Acrux. Nearby, we have Beta Crucis, the eastern star, and then Gamma Crucis, at the head of the cross. Delta Crucis is the western star. Near the cross we find a pair of bright stars, the pointers, that point toward it. The one farthest from the cross is Rigel Cantorus. If a curved line is run from Acrux, we find on it three stars approximately equidistant. Acrux to Maya Placidus to Canopus. Acarnar, Maya Placidus, and the second brightest star in the sky, Canopus, form a 30-60 triangle. Canopus is at the 90-degree angle. When the Southern Cross is low on the southwestern horizon, you will see that a right triangle is formed by Rigel Cantorus, Antares, and Peacock. Note the pronounced shape of the constellation Scorpio, of which Antares is the principal star. Peacock, Akernar, and Fomalo form an equilateral triangle. One of the important things to remember about the constellations is that in their constant apparent motion, they make one complete revolution about the Earth in the course of one day. Of course, only about half of this motion is visible, as the stars can be observed only at night. However, as they rise earlier and earlier each night, during the course of a year they can, at one time or another, 
be seen in all positions in relation to the horizon. For example, in latitude 40 north, about December 21st, the dipper would be in this position in the evening. By midnight, it would have moved to this position. Observe that it is to the right of Polaris, and the handle is pointing downward. Continuing its motion to the westward, it would be in this position by morning. About midnight, March 21st, the dipper would be above Polaris near the zenith and in an inverted position. Observe that Cassiopeia appears like the letter W. About midnight, June 21st, the dipper is to the left of Polaris with its handle pointing upward. About midnight, September 21st, we see the dipper below Polaris and close to the horizon. Cassiopeia now appears like the letter M. Now observe the appearance of Orion about midnight in December. Betelgeuse is highest above the horizon and Sirius is to the left. In spring, Orion would be setting about midnight and only Betelgeuse would be above the horizon. In the fall, Sirius is below Orion, which is close to the horizon and rising about midnight. From latitude 20 degrees south, we could see the southern constellations in any of these positions during the period of a year. A familiarity with the heavens will give any navigator a confidence that can never be attained by depending entirely upon the use of mechanical means for star identification.